This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1595. Want to make more money? Just add value and stir well by Don Starks of simplemoneypro.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I read to you from the best personal finance blogs on the web, with the author's permission, of course. And if you're looking for some financially minded friends, check out the Facebook group I run called For the Fi Curious. This is a joint group between Optimal Finance Daily and the Economy Conference, which is an event I produce. In this group, we aim to inspire you on your path to financial independence. So I like to share interesting articles, quotes, and thought provoking questions to ponder together. I'm also posting questions that come in from this show's listeners in the Facebook group. So it's a great opportunity to participate in the discussion and hear from other money nerds. Just search for Optimal Finance Daily and you'll quickly find the Facebook group called For the Fi Curious. But since you're here, let's jump right into today's post and continue optimizing your life. Want to make more money? Just add value and stir well by Dawn Starks of simplemoneypro.com. Having issues with your monthly budget? Do you struggle to make ends meet? Financial experts often approach this issue from the expense side. What can you cut to free up financial resources each month? I'm not immune. I enjoy being creative about budgeting and I like to write about ways to streamline expenses. I'm also aware there are societal issues and pressures that make it difficult for people to get ahead, especially in lower income work. I've always believed we can acknowledge and work to change those societal problems. But meanwhile, sitting still and complaining about societal issues doesn't pay the bills. My life philosophy has always been that I'm responsible for bettering myself and my situation, just me. I might get some help if I seek it out, but it's my job to take the bull by the horns and find a solution to my problems. So for today, let's focus on the income side of the budget equation and look at some ideas for potentially improving your financial situation. Here are some ways to increase household income. Ask for a raise. I'm not an advocate for asking your boss for more money willy-nilly. However, if you suspect you're underpaid for the skills and effort you provide your employer, do a little homework. Research similar positions and pay levels for people with similar responsibilities and qualifications and build your case dispassionately. No boss wants to hear about how you need a raise. As a boss myself, my hackles would go straight up if that was an employee's approach. Instead, focus your appeal on what you bring to the table. Calmly present your research results and make the case for why you deserve a higher level of pay. Ask for more responsibility. Perhaps your research proves you're being fairly paid in your present position. In that case, consider asking for additional work or greater responsibility at your present job with a corresponding pay increase. Shop around. Getting nowhere with your present employer If you feel that the upward opportunities and pay increases are not in the cards with your current employer, begin looking around. What other employers in your industry are out there and how do their positions and benefits stack up? Remember that geography plays an important role in pay levels based on cost of living in a particular city or region. When doing this research, however, don't forget that your pay rate isn't everything. Consider the full value of all the benefits to make an apples to apples comparison. Get a second job. If your day job has steady, predictable hours that provide a stable base for your income, consider starting a second job to bring in more money. Carrying more than one job requires determination and stamina, since you might be working quite a few hours of your week. You may find working a second job is short-lived once you get yourself back on your financial feet. Start a side hustle. A downside of a second job can be the dueling demands of two employer schedules. As a result, many people decide to start their own business on the side to have flexibility in scheduling the additional work. What skills do you have that you're using in your current work that might be needed elsewhere? What skills do you have that are not currently being used that might be needed elsewhere? Do some deep thinking about the sort of work you enjoy doing and the special skills you possess that others would find valuable. How can you market those skills to find work on the side? Do virtual work. These days, it's often easier to find work since we're no longer as limited by geography. Improve your computer skills so that you can research finding work online. 
From my recent observations, the sky is the limit in terms of the sort of work now being outsourced via the internet. Like the side hustle, virtual work can provide more flexibility if you're trying to bring in additional income while maintaining your day job. Sell your stuff. A radically different idea from the previous suggestions. But if you're struggling and trying to piece together other avenues of paid employment, you might need a quicker fix. Most people have things in their homes that they no longer need. These things can be sold locally or over the internet to bring in some needed cash. Some people get so good at this sort of commerce that they purposefully go find treasures at thrift stores and yard sales and turn around and resell the items at a profit. This might be a side hustle you enjoy. Educate yourself. Find inexpensive ways to educate yourself. Staying up to date on computer skills is enormously important. Technology is changing very rapidly and being unplugged for even a few months can put you behind the eight ball when it comes to upgrading your income. I bet you can carve time out of your schedule too. Think about what progress you can make if you eliminated one hour of television or internet surfing time per day and substituted a self-education program. Make a list of things you might like to learn or things you should learn to keep up in your field or with the world in general, as with technology. Then look around online as well as checking into your local community college to find a way to learn for free or on the cheap. Think outside the box too and consider people you know with whom you can barter for knowledge. Always be scanning. Complacency can be dangerous. Work at a factory in an industry that's moving factory jobs overseas? I'm not suggesting you should like it, but I'm suggesting you should be paying attention. Always be scanning to see what threats may be encroaching upon your livelihood as well as what opportunities are there. I'm not suggesting constant paranoia. I am, however, suggesting and advocating that you take the reins in your life. Don't get lulled into a stupor of complacency. Adjust your attitude to add value. None of the above makes a bit of difference if your attitude is, what's in it for me? If you are always looking for ways you can benefit from a situation, change your mindset. Instead, look for ways you can add value in a situation. It's only by adding value on a consistent basis that you'll truly be fairly compensated. It might take a while for things to turn around, but don't give up. I'm not unrealistic about the required fortitude needed to maintain an attitude of helpfulness when it feels like your world is falling apart. Been there, done that. Just remind yourself that only you are responsible for you. And sometimes the only thing you can control is how you act and react in a situation. Be responsible and march forward. Things will start looking up. You just listened to the post titled, Want to Make More Money? Just Add Value and Stir Well by Don Starks of simplemoneypro.com. I thought Don made some great points here on increasing income. It is certainly an important factor in the equation of increasing the gap between your earnings and expenses. One of the biggest assets we have in increasing income is through our career trajectory and the choices we make along the way. So it certainly benefits us to get a bit more savvy in how we negotiate our pay from our primary source of income. It's really easy to say, get a second job or start a side hustle but many of us commit most of our time and energy to our primary jobs. And with families and the need to relax and recharge, piling on more work can quickly lead to burnout. For me personally, I work to fully optimize my salary with my employer before I started looking at other sources of income. In fact, this is such an important topic that I'm having an expert speak on it at the Economy Conference this November at the University of Cincinnati. Rich Jones, who hosts the Paychecks and Balances podcast, also works at Google, where he focuses on retention and progression for historically marginalized groups. Rich's career progression has been instrumental in helping him find financial success, and I'm thrilled that he'll share his learnings with us on the economy stage. Come join us this November. Tickets are available at economyconference.com, and you can get 10% off with the promo code OFD. And that should do it for today. Have a great day and I'll see you on the Friday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.